Okay, so the last time I checked out Acer's Helios 300 was three years ago. It was a very popular gaming laptop during that time, considering the price to performance ratio it offered. But can we say the same thing three years later with the 2022 version of the same laptop? Well, I wouldn't classify it as same since a lot has changed from a physical standpoint, as well as the hardware that you get under the hood. So as always, we're gonna analyze it from top to bottom and find out if it's actually worth your money. Spoiler alert, it's a gaming beast, guys. Now, Acer is only offering two SKUs of the Helios 300. The base model costs around $1,500 US, and for that, you get a Core i7-12700H with six performance cores and eight efficiency cores for a total of 20 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 4,800 megahertz, half a terabyte of storage, an RTX 3060 GPU with six gigabytes of VRAM, and a 1080p IPS 165 hertz display. The spec that I have over here costs around $2,100, but at the time of making this video, you can pick it up for around $1,850 at Best Buy, and that upgrades the storage to a terabyte, the GPU to an RTX 3070 Ti with eight gigabytes of VRAM, and a Quad HD IPS 240 hertz display. The good news is that you can actually buy these laptops right now, and if you pick up the spec that I have over here for less than 2K, it's a steal in my opinion. Now this year, Acer has refreshed the chassis design of the Helios 300 compared to last year's model. They actually kept it relatively simple by taking a page out of their Triton series of laptops, uh, applied a fresh coat of black paint and a few gamery aesthetics to make it a bit more streamlined and of course fit in with the rest of the lineup. So the edges are now straightened and the front lid has this dual tone finish that bridges brushed aluminum and matte black textures. Personally, I would have rather seen it all matte black since I prefer the stealth look. Plus, this brushed aluminum texture picks up a lot of fingerprints and it just looks pretty disgusting after you know a week of usage. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're looking for an all clean look, the base model features a unified design, but it comes with a massive Predator logo. So there are pros and cons uh, to getting either one of these SKUs. You'll also notice that they've added a subtle RGB bar underneath the palm rest, but in all honesty, it's useless because you can't notice it until you actually physically lift the laptop. It also lacks vibrancy and it's not bright enough uh, to give you some sort of ambient lighting at night. So yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to have it right there. On the other hand, build quality is noticeably better than the Nitro 5 series that I checked out not too long ago. Acer is actually using a combination of aluminum and plastic materials to make this a bit more rigid, and I was instantly able to tell the difference. The hinge is much stronger, but keep in mind that the overall footprint is slightly larger than last year's model. It's a little over an inch thick versus 0.9 inches or 25 millimeters versus 22.8 millimeters, but the weight has remained the same at about five and a half pounds. It's literally the exact same setup as the Nitro 5, which is a good thing because you're actually getting a lot more in terms of power uh, in a somewhat portable chassis. The power adapter is huge, guys. It's a 280 watt power supply and it charges a laptop via the standard uh, barrel stall connector. Now, if you plan to carry this laptop all day, I think you're in for a challenge. Not to mention, you actually need to make room for the charger and this pretty massive laptop anyway. So uh, yeah, it's just not gonna be a very portable friendly package. And now we're gonna beautifully transition into today's video's sponsor. Good people, I spend the majority of my time brainstorming ideas, editing videos, and even gaming here at the studio. And I've been meaning to add some personality to my set. I'm into cars, I love abstract art, and Iron Man is my favorite superhero. So how can I express my passion for these things? Well, meet Display. It's a high quality metal poster that can easily be mounted to a wall using the included magnets. You can browse through millions of licensed designs to suit your setup. As you can see, I picked up exactly what I loved and it looks incredible. Click the link below to get a special discount if you're interested. All right, taking a look at the interior space and what we have over here is a full-size keyboard with a numpad. Uh, the arrow keys are bigger and easier to get to, but what I did find challenging was getting used to these smaller keycaps. I found myself constantly making typos on this laptop, which again, could be a subjective matter, but something else to point out is that the switches themselves they lack definition. They feel shallow and have a bit of a mushy feeling when you bought them out. 
It's not the best that I've come across on a gaming laptop, especially uh, when you compare it to the stuff that Lotto World Legion offers or even the Asus ROG laptops. On the positive side, it does come with perky RGB lighting and you can go to town with effects uh, to style this laptop through Predator Sense, which is the driver software uh, that comes pre-installed on the Helios 300. They're bright and vibrant. It's absolutely gorgeous, guys. Also, the trackpad is amazing. I believe it's a glass surface with precision support, so navigating within the operating system was very smooth and precise. Uh, it's much, much better than the plasticky stuff that you get with the Nitro 5 series. The primary left and right clicks are nice and defined as well, so kudos to Acer for uh, nailing the trackpad on the Helios 300. It's really good. Port selection on this laptop is well thought out. It's actually spread evenly across the chassis. The important ones are behind the laptop, like power in, Thunderbolt 4 port, HDMI 2.1, and a mini display 1.4 port. That's pretty uncommon to find on laptops these days, and I'm surprised that Acer has included that here. Uh, this layout is certainly gonna come in clutch for easier cable management. Um, switching over to the left-hand side, we have an RJ45 jack, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, and an audio jack. Switching over to the right, there are two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, with one of them featuring power off charging. Now, for those of you wondering how good the built-in DAC is, it's solid. A little bass heavy, but uh, you can actually tune it using the EQs via the DTS Ultra app that comes pre-installed on this laptop. This is what the webcam looks like on the Helios 300. Uh, now, a few things to note is that uh, it is using an upgraded 1080p sensor, uh, so the detail is slightly better compared to uh, last year. Uh, also, another thing that's disappointing is that the skin tones are not accurate. Uh, in some cases, it completely exhibits magenta skin tones, which looks completely off, and of course, the exposure is uh, off as well, so those things need to be considered as well. But on the positive side, the microphone quality is superb. It honestly sounds amazing. Noise reduction is great. It actually projects my voice really well. Compression is solid. I can't complain about the audio quality or the microphone quality on the new Helios 300. The speakers are located at the bottom and they don't sound that great, but that's what you expect for this type of setup. Uh, there is no bass, the trebles are muted, so I would highly recommend a good pair of headphones or an external sound system to get a better audio experience. Moving on to the display, and what we have over here is a brand new Quad HD 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen with a refresh rate of 240 hertz. Now that's a huge bump up compared to the 165 hertz option on last year's model. It is unfortunate that we don't get a 16 by 10 panel, but it's not the end of the world, and if you go past that massive chin at the bottom, this is a pretty amazing display as it covers 100% sRGB, 87% Adobe RGB, and 98% P3. So it's a fantastic option for content creators or photographers, and of course, more specifically, gamers. It's vibrant, and when you pair that with the super smooth 240 hertz refresh rate with G-Sync, you're really in for a treat, guys. The only downside is that it doesn't get bright enough to view outdoors. Our sample was only able to sustain a peak brightness level of around 312 nits, which is the lowest among some other gaming laptops that we've checked out recently. Upgradability is pretty straightforward on the Helios 300. You have instant access to two RAM slots. Maximum supported memory is 32 gigabytes. The primary NVMe SSD is right over here, and the drive speeds are wicked fast. Remember, Intel's 12 gen laptops feature Gen 4 technologies, so you get read speeds over 6.5 gigabytes per second and writes around five. Um, there's also an extra M.2 slot for storage expansion. I also do want to take this time to appreciate how fast storage tech has become because, you know, three or four years ago, getting these kinds of speeds was just literally impossible until you found a RAID array solution, but just being able to achieve that on a laptop with a single module is mind blowing. Now, what about battery life? Well, Acer has actually given a massive battery boost uh, from 54 watt hours on last year's model to 90 watt hours. But a lot of the competition's done the same thing too. And that means this laptop gets a solid middle of the pack battery life. You won't be running around trying to find an electrical socket every few hours, but don't expect a full day of unplugged time if you're running basic workloads. The same thing goes for heavier loads too. These are all high-end laptops with fast CPUs and GPUs. They are meant to run higher end workloads while running on battery. So this thing doesn't have the best battery life on the block, but I wanna get back to what I said at the beginning of this video. The Helios 300 is an absolute beast when it comes to performance. I mean, check this out. This is by far the most power we've seen pushed into a 12700H. In turbo and extreme modes, the CPU runs at a constant 112 watts 
all day, every day under a multi-core workload. Even default and quiet end up right around the 85 watt zone, which is still more than a lot of other gaming laptops I've tested in the last year. On the flip side of that coin, this isn't the coolest running gaming laptop either. Luckily, none of the modes gets anywhere close to Intel's maximum temperature of 100 degrees, so it's not like the Helio CPU is overheating or anything, it's just that Acer has made a few sacrifices to get the best possible performance, and this is one of them. Now with temperature levels held in check pretty well and power flowing at some crazy rates, the 12700H is able to run super close to Intel's maximum turbo clocks in Extreme and Turbo. Even lower end modes end up being some of the fastest that I've seen lately. The GPU is in pretty much the same shape here as well, with it being pushed to a full 150 watts in the two high end modes, while even default keeps things rocking at a constant 140 watts. Quiet mode is something else altogether different since it only maintains 130 watts for about two minutes, and after that, power starts going all over the place. Now, with the way the GPU boost algorithm work to balance temperatures, clock speeds, and power, it's almost impossible to really overheat a GPU these days. Instead, what you'll see is clock speeds take a massive hit to control temperature, so there's nothing really interesting to see here. On the other hand, these are some of the highest speeds that I've noticed from an RTX 3070 Ti so far, but not by all that much. The reason behind that is pretty simple. While NVIDIA's algorithms reward lower temperatures and high power specs, they only allow GPUs to go so far above their maximum boost clock. After that, you can throw as much power and cooling at the thing, and you wouldn't get one bit more performance. Now, that might all look fine, and this is an absolutely fast gaming laptop, actually an insanely fast gaming laptop. But like they say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And yeah, there is a small problem. You see, in turbo mode and extreme mode, the Helios 300 is most possibly the loudest, unusable, unpleasant thing. Because even with headphones on, it's insane. It sounds like a jet fan. There is a dedicated button right beside the keyboard that enables turbo mode. So I'm gonna press this right now and you're gonna hear it. What? You probably can't hear me right now. I'm, I'm, yeah, this, okay, this is what extreme sounds like. Well, right now I'm not on a GPU load, but it definitely, I'm gonna leave my decibel <laughs> readings right over here so you can actually take a look at how bad it sounds. You see, this isn't something that I wanna use every day in extreme or turbo mode, unless if I need to process a rendering workload and I'm leaving it alone in a room with the door closed. Both of those modes also push their noise levels just way beyond what we use as our decibel cap for testing, which means default is what all the benchmarks will be running. And let's see how that lines up with the other laptops that you're gonna find in the charts. So it's pretty obvious that the Helios 300 should be one of the fastest laptops I've ever tested, right up there with the SCAR 17 and the GE76 Raider. And remember, all of these were tested in their default modes too because of how much noise they all make when pushed to something like Extreme or Turbo. Anyways, let's see how good this thing really is. Starting with single core results, and this is an interesting one because no matter how much wattage is pushed into a CPU, single threaded results will still be capped by the maximum turbo frequency. The rest of the results are pretty much what you'd expect. A 12700H running at a constant 85 watts will walk all over pretty much everything out there. Yes, that also includes an i9-12900H and a 12900HK, considering all the laptops I've tested with those are running at much lower wattages and clock speeds. This really goes to show that you need to do your research before assuming a higher end, more powerful and expensive CPU like the 12900 series will get you better results. It really is amazing to see what Acer is offering here for a price point that undercuts a lot of the ultra high end laptops on this list. But there is something else I need to mention here and that's the Helios 300's MUX switch. You see, a lot of early reviews reported that it wasn't working the way that it should or it was completely disabled. But that has changed right now. A few weeks ago, Acer pushed out a BIOS update that enables it, but there's a few things that you need to know. First of all, you need to make sure that your laptop is updated. And to confirm the MUX switch is working, head into the BIOS by pressing F2 during boot up, and then go into the advanced section and select the advanced tab. 
then press Control and S and the MUX setting should show up. Then in Windows, you'll need to use the NVIDIA control panel and head over into display mode to toggle it since Acer hasn't added their switch to their Predator Sense app yet. Now, using Advanced Optimus gets a better gaming performance, but there's some things that you need to know about this when it comes to utilizing this with other applications. For example, when using DaVinci Resolve to render a video, the system gets a bit confused when Advanced Optimus is enabled. It just doesn't provide quite as much as power to the RTX 3070 Ti as it should, but turning on the discrete GPU only gives results that are right in line with other laptops that have advanced Optimus. Hopefully, Acer improves on this in the future. But the good thing is that it performed normally in every single game we tested, and I guess that's a good transition into our gaming results. And starting at 1080p, it seems like the extra CPU wattage gives the Helios 300 an advantage every now and then over something like the SCAR 17 that uses an almost identical graphics setup. But unlike in real world benchmarks, there's just no way to compete against that GE76 Raider since it's got the best CPU and the best GPU for gaming on the planet right now. You just have to remember the Raider is more heavier and thicker and a good $2,000 more expensive than the Helios 300. Yeah, you heard that right, 2,000 bucks. And while sure that laptop can get a lot better frame rates than the Helios, you really have to ask yourself, is the extra money worth between 10 to 20% higher performance in gaming? Personally, I'd say hell no, but hey, Maybe some of you guys appreciate the best of the best for gaming, even though the Raider has one of the worst screens and worst build qualities I've ever seen from any laptop this year. So yeah, that is also interesting as well. So does the new Predator Helios 300 offer the best price to performance ratio? And is it worth your money? I think the answer to that depends on how you plan to use this laptop. You see, if you're strictly looking for performance in a somewhat portable chassis, go for it, no questions asked. It's also a great desktop replacement since battery life really isn't its biggest forte. Personally, I would have loved to see them refine the design a little bit by going with an all matte black chassis instead of the dual tone matte black and brushed aluminum texture because this thing picks up a lot of fingerprints. Um, the screen could also be a bit brighter and taller and the keyboard seriously needs some work. The mushy feeling just takes away an enjoyable typing experience. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I also just realized that this isn't an all matte black laptop, actually in really bright lighting. It's more of like a very, very, very dark blue finish with some cyan accents on it. But uh, yeah, good discovery. So at least I brought it up on video, so that's good. Yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the new Predator Helios 300 from Acer. Let me know what you guys think about it, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and spend responsibly, my friends.